This afternoon, I'd like to speak for a little while on the purpose of praise and worship. The Bible speaks about praise and worship quite frequently. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to take a lot of time to name all of them. I'll just name a few. In Psalm 145 and verse 3, it says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. That is a powerful statement in itself. That great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. We could never find out how great God truly is. This eternal God who has always been and will always be, we will be continually discovering more of his greatness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Psalm 150, very familiar passage, we read, it says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and with organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high-sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. A psalm completely dedicated to praising God. In Psalm 100, another very familiar another very familiar passage, it says, "Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord he is God, it is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving." And into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. I believe praise and worship is a vital, vital part of walking with God. Praise and worship are mentioned many times throughout the Bible. And I know praise and worship are two different things. They're related, but they're different. I'm not going to go into that. That's an entirely different message. But what I want to say just simply is that you cannot get to worship without first going through praise. So with that being said, Let's talk about some of the benefits we receive from praise and worship. First benefit we receive is found in Psalm 22 and verse 3. And it says, But thou art holy, O thou inhabitest the praises of Israel. And we know that we are grafted in the vine through the spirit of adoption. We are become one of the children of Israel, one of God's people. So when he says that, he's saying, I inhabit the praises of my people. So God inhabits our praises. As the true living church of God, we can praise God and he can live in our presence. He says, when you praise me, I will show up. I like that statement. I believe Brother Matt Johnson said it a few years back, that God's address is literally at the corner of praise and worship. It's very simple, but it's profound. And I believe most of us understand that, but it's, it's something else to put it into practice. So one of the benefits we receive is through praise and worship, we get in God's presence. The other thing we receive or another thing is victory. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and we won't go into that, uh, or we won't go um, read it for the sake of time, but Jehoshaphat was a king of Judah, and he was up against a pretty big problem. He had some armies. The Bible says a multitude rose up against them. They were coming to attack, and Jehoshaphat sought the Lord. And God spoke to them, and he said, The battle is not yours, it is mine. 
So Jehoshaphat decided, you know what we're going to do? We're going to put praise singers out front in our, in our army that marches out to meet them. We're going we're gonna to put the praisers up front, the singers up front, because God told us we're not going to have to fight this. So we're just going to worship and praise God. And the Bible says that, in fact, let, let's, go to, um, let's go to verse 23, I believe. Uh, no, maybe it was 20. Maybe it was verse 20. Next verse, I apologize. There we go. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. And the next verse. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. The Bible says when they began to praise, when they began to praise, God put these ambushments against them. It was the moment that they decided we're going to lift our voice, sing praises to God. At that moment, God sent ambushments because they already knew they weren't going to have to fight this battle, that God was going to fight for them. So they started singing praises for the victory that was to come. And when they did it, God sent ambushments against the enemy and brought victory for the children of Judah. Another great benefit we receive is liberty, freedom. In 2 Corinthians 3.17, it says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We already know that when we praise God, we get in his presence. So when we praise God, the spirit of the Lord himself comes and dwells with us. And then where that spirit is, there's liberty. So through praise, we receive liberty. We read in Acts chapter 16 about two men. Two men who were doing Nothing but, but preaching the gospel and put in prison and beaten. And the Bible says that in this dark hour, when they, it would have been easy to stop and complain, the Bible says that they prayed and sang songs. They prayed and they praised. And through that, God sent a great earthquake in there. And when that earthquake hit, it broke every chain. It freed them from everything that was binding them. Their prison doors were open. Through that praise, God delivered them from everything that was binding them. And that's something I am so thankful for, that I have that benefit that when I lift my hands, I lift my voice, and I shout to God with a voice of triumph, that through that, through that, my chains, anything that's binding me can be loosed, can be loosed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. What an awesome benefit. There is no need to live with things binding us. All it takes is lifting our hands and praising God, giving him praise and thanks and glory because he is worthy of it. And through that, we receive liberty, freedom, freedom. Another benefit we receive in Psalm 1611, it says in his presence is fullness of joy. As I said, when we praise, we're in his presence. So in his presence, there's liberty and there's joy. Now, joy is a complicated thing, really. People confuse joy and happiness all the time. But happiness is just for a moment. Happiness is fleeting. Joy is long-lasting. Joy is there in any circumstance. Good or bad, joy is there. And I need joy every day. So I need to be in his presence every day. If I want that joy... I, I need to get in his presence. Another thing we receive is in Nehemiah 8 and 10. At the end of that verse, it says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So in his presence, I receive joy. And through that joy, I, get, I receive strength. 
Again, I need strength every day. There's things that I, that I come up against day to day that I'm going to need the strength of God working in me to resist those things or to overcome those things and to conquer those things. We have some awesome benefits just from praising God. And the Bible says in Psalm 150 that the only prerequisite to praising God is that we have breath in our lungs. If we are alive today, we are qualified to praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So then the question becomes, how do we praise? Well, in Hebrews 13, 15, it says, let us offer the sacrifice of praise continually. That is the fruit of our lips. So you can look at that and say simply it's the spoken word. The spoken word is one way we can praise God. And we, all, we know that the Bible says that the power of life and death is in the tongue. There's power in words. And when we use those words to praise God, there's a power there. But it says that it's the sacrifice of praise. The fruit of our lips is a sacrifice of praise. It, 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 it takes a sacrifice to praise God. It's not something that we just do easily a lot of times. It's, it it kind of goes along with, with crucifying the old man, getting rid of the flesh and the fleshly desires. Because I, I, I'm sure most of us are in the same boat. It's not... Something that we, we look forward to and say, you know what? In our flesh, in our flesh, I, I'm going to go to church today and I'm going to behave foolishly. I'm just going to go crazy and get all wild and let my hair fling all around. In our flesh, I don't think that happens. We want to maintain that, that sense of pride and dignity. It's a sacrifice to praise God. Another thing, another way is lifting of hands. There's many areas in the Bible, Psalm 63, 4. Lifting of hands. Shouting, Psalm 47, 1. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shouting is a way to praise God. We might look at that and when someone, if someone shouts in church, that's kind of odd. In other churches especially, If you shout in church, you're probably going to get a few looks. But the Bible says, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. It doesn't say whisper. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. So one thing that I have found is that praise is always expressive. Praise is never something that's done internally. Praise is always outward, always visual, always audible, always expressive. Praise is not something done in secret. I mean, you can do it in your own home, but it's not something when you're around people and you say, I'm praising God, but nobody can tell. That's not praise. Praise is expressive. So when you're at church and you see people getting excited, dancing, shouting, running, snotting all over, it happens. That's that person, those people expressing their praise to God, expressing that worship to God because it's expressive. Now. It doesn't matter how long you've had the Holy Ghost or if you have the Holy Ghost. It it doesn't matter. We've all had thoughts of, God, I don't really feel like doing that right now. Or I I don't I don't really want to to look like a fool. I'm a little timid. I'm a little scared. I I don't want to, God. In, In my case, there's probably more I don't feel like it than I don't want to. I sound like one of my boys, I think. I I don't feel like it. But 
we, we've all had those times when we just are, are holding back saying, God, I, I, don't, I don't want to do that. That's a little extreme. It's a little excessive. Now, I am a very reserved person. God has been working on me over the years, but I have, I have a hard time expressing my emotions for the most part, um, except for when it comes to the things of God. Thank God he, he changed me in that area. But my wife would tell you that when she gives me a gift, if it's a great gift and I'm excited about it, my reaction would be something like, wow, that's a good gift. Thank you. Appreciate it. And if it's an okay gift, my reaction would be, wow, that's a great gift. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm not a very... Uh, outgoing person in that area. I, I tend to be reserved and shy. Growing up, I, I remember, I'll just go way back in kindergarten. Um, I was held back in kindergarten because I talked to no one. Not the teacher, nobody. I had, I, I take it back, I had one girl that I'd occasionally talk to, and that was it. So because of that, uh, I wasn't ready to go to first grade. So <laughs> apparently if you don't talk to people, they assume you're not ready. So I, I, got, to, I got to go through another year of kindergarten. But that, that's just an example of my nature of being shy. I didn't want anybody looking at me. I didn't want to be in the spotlight. And that hasn't changed. That nature is still there for the most part. Just God has worked things out. God has brought things to pass. He has changed some things in me, but my nature is still the same. And this is a side note, but I believe that's why Paul said, in my weakness am I made strong. Because if it's an area, if I do something and it's an area that I'm strong in, I can look at that and I can say, I did that. But if I do something and it's in an area that I'm weak in, then I look at that and I say, the only way that I did that was through Jesus Christ and his power. That's the only way I did that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I am so thankful that God has done that in me where I can say, I am so thankful to God for these times in my weak areas that he has worked through me. Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm typically or naturally a shy person. And um, I, when I was 12, I'll go, I'll go back to that. I didn't have the Holy Ghost yet. When I was 12, I went, remember, my parents taught me to go to the front after service, after the preaching, you go to the front and you pray. So I remember I came to the front, and it was really kind of the praise 101, you know, put my hands up like this. Not really get hands, just hands kind of like this. Praise 101, the first class of praise. And I, I, I started talking to God quietly. Nobody could hear me, but it was kind of a whisper. And, and the power of God started to come. And, and it, was, it was involuntary, but my leg started to shake. And that, was, that, that wasn't like a praise. My leg wasn't shaking in a praise to God. But that was, I think... The, the moment when it kind of just brought me to an area where people, where I felt like people saw me do something different up front. It wasn't just reserved sitting in a pew or standing there quietly with my hands folded or whatever. It was something different. So I think that was the first step of God pushing me out of that reserved nature, that shy nature. And going a few years down the road now, I was 17 or 18 and I had the Holy Ghost now. It was at a youth convention, and I believe it was my first youth convention. And I was sitting in the second or third row or fourth row, something like that, on the second chair in. And I was sitting by a young man in my youth group who I knew him. I talked to him a little bit, but I didn't. I mean, I was shy by nature, so I didn't really know him that well. And during the, the song service... I don't know why. I, I didn't know why at the time, but I felt to pray for him. I was like, okay. Uh, God, I really don't know this person. 
I don't want to just put my hand on somebody and seem, again, seem like a fool. So I'm not, I don't really want to do that. And I threw a fleece out to God because I felt it again, stronger. So I threw a fleece out. God answered the fleece. I threw another fleece and another fleece. And another, I don't know how many fleeces I threw, but I was nervous. So I threw a lot of more than three, guaranteed. But every one of those fleeces, God humored me and he answered them to tell me, do it. So finally, after who knows how long, I said, okay, God, okay. So I timidly reached my hand over and put it on, put my hand on his shoulder. And immediately when I did, I started interceding for him and he broke and he started praising God. And then something started welling up within me. And it, it just like, it was overwhelming. And it just erupted from within me and said, run. So I had never done anything like this before. I jumped over the, the chair that was there, took off around the church as fast as I could run. I ran around one, one and a half, maybe two, three times, something like that. And by this time, people must have been, God, God was moving in the service, so people were coming to the front, and poof, I hit somebody. <laughs> There's a lady in the church. Oh, my God, what an awesome benefit. There is no need to live with things binding us. All it takes is lifting our hands and praising God, giving him praise and thanks and glory, because he is worthy of it, and through that, we receive liberty, freedom, freedom. Another benefit we receive in Psalm 1611, it says, in his presence is fullness of joy. As I said, when we praise, we're in his presence. So in his presence, there's liberty and there's joy. Now, joy is a complicated thing, really. People confuse joy and happiness all the time. But happiness is just for a moment. Happiness is fleeting. Joy is long-lasting. Joy ha- is there in any circumstance. Good or bad, joy is there. And I need joy every day. So I need to be in his presence every day. If I want that joy, I, I need to get in his presence. Another thing we receive is in Nehemiah 8 and 10, at the end of that verse, it says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So in his presence... I receive joy, and through that joy, I, get, I receive strength. Again, I need strength every day. There's things that I, that I come up against day to day that I'm going to need the strength of God working in me to resist those things or to overcome those things and to conquer those things. We have some awesome benefits just from praising God. And the Bible says in Psalm 150 that the only prerequisite to praising God is that we have breath in our lungs. If we are alive today, we are qualified to praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So then the question becomes, how do we praise? Well, in Hebrews 13, 15, says, let us offer the sacrifice of praise continually. That is the fruit of our lips. So you can look at that and say simply it's the spoken word. The spoken word is one way we can praise God. And we, all, we know that the Bible says that the power of life and death is in the tongue. There's power in words. And when we use those words to praise God, there's a power there. But it says that it's the sacrifice of praise. The fruit of our lips is a sacrifice of praise. It it, it takes a sacrifice to praise God. It's not something that we just do easily a lot of times. It kind of goes along with, with crucifying the old man, getting rid of the flesh and the fleshly desires. Because I'm sure most of us are in the same boat. It's not... Something that we, we look forward to and say, you know what, in our flesh, in our flesh, I, I'm going to go to church today and I'm going to behave foolishly. I'm just going to go crazy and get all wild and let my hair fling all around. 
in our flesh, I don't think that happens. We want to maintain that, that sense of pride and dignity. It's a sacrifice to praise God. Another, thing, another way is lifting of hands. There's many areas in the Bible, Psalm 63, 4. Lifting of hands. Shouting, Psalm 47, 1. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Shouting is a way to praise God. We might look at that and when someone, if someone shouts in church, that's kind of odd. In other churches especially, if you shout in church, you're probably going to get a few looks. But the Bible says, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Doesn't say whisper. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. So one thing that I have found is that praise is always expressive. Praise is never something that's done internally. Praise is always outward, always visual, always audible, always expressive. Praise is not something done in secret. I mean, you can do it in your own home, but it's not something when you're around people and you say, I'm praising God, but nobody can tell. That's not praise. Praise is expressive. So when you're at church and you see people getting excited, dancing, shouting, running, snotting all over, it happens. That's that person those people expressing their praise to God, expressing that worship to God because it's expressive. Now, it doesn't matter how long you've had the Holy Ghost or if you have the Holy Ghost, it, it doesn't matter. We've all had thoughts of, God, I don't really feel like doing that right now. Or I, I don't. I don't really want to, to look like a fool. I'm a little timid. I'm a little scared. I, I don't want to, God. In, in my case, there's probably more I don't feel like it than I don't want to. I sound like one of my boys, I think. You know, I, I don't feel like it. But we, we've all had those times when we just are, are holding back saying, God, I, I, don't, I don't want to do that. That's a little extreme. It's a little excessive. Now, I am a very reserved person. God has been working on me over the years, but I have, I have a hard time expressing my emotions for the most part, um, except for when it comes to the things of God. Thank God he, he changed me in that area. But my wife would tell you that when she gives me a gift, if it's a great gift and I'm excited about it, my reaction would be something like, wow, that's a good gift. Thank you. Appreciate it. And if it's an okay gift, my reaction would be, wow, that's a great gift. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm not a very... Uh, outgoing person in that area. I, I tend to be reserved and shy. Growing up, I, I remember, I'll just go way back in kindergarten. Um, I was held back in kindergarten because I talked to no one. Not the teacher, nobody. I had, I, I take it back, I had one girl that I'd occasionally talk to, and that was it. So because of that, uh, I wasn't ready to go to first grade. So apparently if you don't talk to people, they assume you're not ready. So I, I, got, to, I got to go through another year of kindergarten. But that, that's just an example of my nature of being shy. I didn't want anybody looking at me. I didn't want to be in the spotlight. And that hasn't changed. That nature is still there for the most part. Just God has worked things out. God has brought things to pass. He has changed some things in me, but my nature is still the same. And this is a side note, but 
I believe that's why Paul said, in my weakness am I made strong. Because if it's an area, if I do something and it's an area that I'm strong in, I can look at that and I can say, I did that. But if I do something and it's in an area that I'm weak in, then I look at that and I say, the only way that I did that was through Jesus Christ and his power. That's the only way I did that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I am so thankful that God has done that in me where I can say, I am so thankful to God for these times in my weak areas that he has worked through me. Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm typically or naturally a shy person. And um, I, when I was 12, I'll go, I'll go back to that. I didn't have the Holy Ghost yet. When I was 12, I went, remember, my parents taught me to go to the front after service, after the preaching, you go to the front and you pray. So I remember I came to the front, and it was really kind of the praise 101, you know, put my hands up like this. Not really get hands, just hands kind of like this. Praise 101, the first class of praise. And I, I, I started talking to God quietly. Nobody could hear me, but it was kind of a whisper. And, and the power of God started to come. And, and it, was, it was involuntary, but my leg started to shake. And that, was, that, that wasn't like a praise. My leg wasn't shaking in a praise to God. But that was, I think... The, the moment when it kind of just brought me to an area where people, where I felt like people saw me do something different up front. It wasn't just reserved sitting in a pew or standing there quietly with my hands folded or whatever. It was something different. So I think that was the first step of God pushing me out of that reserved nature, that shy nature. And going a few years down the road now, I was 17 or 18 and I had the Holy Ghost now. It was at a youth convention, and I believe it was my first youth convention. And I was sitting in the second or third row or fourth row, something like that, on the second chair in. And I was sitting by a young man in my youth group who I knew him. I talked to him a little bit, but I didn't. I mean, I was shy by nature, so I didn't really know him that well. And during the, the song service, I don't know why. I, I didn't know why at the time, but I felt to pray for him. I was like, okay. Uh, God, I really don't know this person. I don't want to just put my hand on somebody and seem, again, seem like a fool. So I'm, I don't really want to do that. And I threw a fleece out to God because I felt it again, stronger. So I threw a fleece out. God answered the fleece. I threw another fleece. And another fleece and another. I don't know how many fleeces I threw, but I was nervous. So I threw a lot of more than three guaranteed. But every one of those fleeces, God humored me and he answered them to tell me do it. So finally, after who knows how long, I said, OK, God, OK. So I timidly reached my hand over and put it on, put my hand on his shoulder and Immediately when I did, I started interceding for him, and he broke, and he started praising God. And then something started welling up within me, and it, it just like, it was overwhelming, and it just erupted from within me and said, run. So I had never done anything like this before. I jumped over the, the chair that was there, took off around the church as fast as I could run. I ran around one, one and a half, maybe two, three times, something like that. And by this time, people must have been, God, God was moving in the service, so people were coming to the front, and poof, I hit somebody. <laughs> There's a lady in the church. She didn't fall down, thank God. Neither did I. <laughs> but I had been running with my eyes closed. I'd watched people run. I grew up in the church. I'd seen people run the aisles, but I never looked at their faces to see if they were open, eyes were open or closed. So I, I, I was afterwards. I mean, I was really embarrassed. But afterwards, years later, I thought, you know, that was something special God did because I ran around the church with my eyes closed. And it was my first time in that church. <laughs> so <laughs> it almost became a thing of, wow, God. <laughs> I mean, it was foolish, but wow, God. <laughs> 
That was great. So that was my first time running the aisles. And the thing about that that I want to just say here real quick was that was such a powerful, almost eruption and explosion within me to run that I believe it would have been harder to suppress it than it would have been to give in. And I, to this day, I believe that it was God pushing me out of my shyness, pushing me out of my reserved nature, saying, do this, it'll be better for you. It'll be better for you. I want to teach you something. I want to show you something. And from that day, I, I, every time I run the aisles, it's that same eruption within. It's that same eruption, explosion from within that I run. Now, it's, it's gotten to where I, I, I'm more sensitive to it so I can feel it. It doesn't have to build up so much anymore. But it's still there. I know it's still there. And, and I know that's still God pushing me out because my nature still doesn't want to be seen doing stuff like that. But I believe that that was God pushing me out of my shyness, showing me something new. So, as, I, as you probably figured out from that, I don't run the aisles gingerly. I, and that's not to say you shouldn't run the aisles gingerly. It's probably smarter. I don't know. But <laughs> I don't run the aisles gingerly. When I run the aisles, it's just a poof, full throttle, gone. Because it's been, it, it wells up and just erupts, so I take off and run with everything that I have. Well... Another youth convention. I think it was the next youth convention in Sioux Falls again. Again, that feeling just rose up within me, and it erupted. So I took off again, running the aisles, and, and um, my dress shoes did, were the slick kind, so they didn't have any, any grip. So I made it to the back of the church on this side, and my left foot hit, and <laughs> out. My foot went from underneath me. I slid on the carpet. I got up. Nobody saw me. So I kept running. I don't know if they, anyone thought, well, he took a little pause in the back. But anyway, I got done running. I got to the front. I, I just started jumping and praising God. And when I got back to my seat and uh, I sat back down, there was a hole in my pants right here. So the rest of the service, I was sitting either like this or like this. Because <laughs> I, I wanted to cover up the hole. I didn't want people to see that. Uh, another time, this one was in Aberdeen. I was probably wearing the same dress shoes because it wasn't, I don't think it was that much of a gap between the two stories. Again, that feeling to run just burst within me. So I took off running and I don't know how many times I ran, but this time I got to the front, like right here (laughs) and it happened again. I slid this time. I slid on my back so I didn't ruin any more clothes. But when when I was done, I knew I'm, everybody saw that. No way people were oblivious to that one. So I, I was a little embarrassed, but I didn't really care. I just laid on my back and worshiped God from my back. Just, I don't care, God. I'm going to worship you anyway. I'm going to praise you because you're worthy. God, God's presence was so powerful, I didn't care. The thought crossed my mind, but immediately I was like, I don't care. I wasn't embarrassed. I didn't get up and, like, shrink back to my seat. I didn't care. Another time, just real quick, this was probably within, a, within the last year, I was running computer, and our computer is up on the platform. And uh, we have just a computer monitor sitting there, and uh, we run the words for our songs and scriptures. And uh, during song service, the power of God was there moving, and I was getting excited. So I'm, I'm jumping, and sometimes when I'm jumping, I get a little lost. And that happened here. I got a little lost, and when I jumped, I hit the desk. So the monitor toppled over and made a big bang right up front. Everybody could see. So th- it didn't break, but I uh, embarrassed, was bar- embarrassed, picked it up, put it back on the desk. And then kept worshiping God, just pushed it away and gave myself a little more room. But uh, there's some times that I can easily say were very embarrassing. Um, I won't go into the details, but there was another time at church camp where I was jumping and my pants caught on a chair. (laughs) 
in the back. And uh, that was difficult. I almost wanted to take my suit coat off and, like, tie it around my waist. <laughs> so there have been some embarrassing times in, in my praise to God that I could look at or anybody could look at and say, well, that's pretty embarrassing. But in all that time, not once did anybody ever come up to me later and say, you sure looked like a fool. You know, when you ran and you slid back there because you were running for God, that looked dumb. Nobody said that. Nobody said that. In fact, what I can say is usually, usually when God moves on me to do that, something erupts in that church and more people get involved. More people say, they see that and they're, oh, I can do something. I can do something. And maybe they get a little excited and they start jumping. They start dancing. I don't know what it is, but I can tell you in my experience, it seems like that eruption of praise is contagious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David had an experience like this. David, when he was bringing back the Ark of the Covenant, which was the representation of the presence of God and where God dwelled, he was bringing back the Ark of the Covenant for the second time. And he was doing it properly. And the Bible says that he danced before the Lord with all his might. All his might. They, he, had, he had people that were playing music, singing songs, and he was dancing with all his might. Now, when I read that and I read the all his might, in my head, there's not a picture of a synchronized dance, a two-step. There's nothing like that in my head. In my head, it's a man dancing wildly, crazy for God. And I don't know, the Bible doesn't say, but maybe, just maybe that same thing that wells up in me and says, run, rose up in David and said, dance, now dance. And David took off dancing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And while he was dancing, he got a little undignified in front of some maidens. And the Bible says his wife, Saul's daughter, my cow, however you want to say it. She was looking out the window. She saw him and she despised him in her heart. And David came home. And she started mocking him. Telling him how glorious he looked in front of all the women of the of the kingdom. Being sarcastic. Belittling him for his praise to God. Now, I've never experienced this. As I said, every time I praised God, it was always nobody said anything negative. But David encountered negativity. He encountered resistance. But David didn't let it affect him. David said, I will be more vile than thus. In, in our words, he basically said, you haven't seen anything yet. What you saw today is just the tip of the iceberg of what I'm prepared to do for my God. Of the praise that I'm prepared to give to my God. Because I know and I understand that my God is great and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. There's no amount of praise that I can give God that would be too much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. So in our nature, when we're shy, we're timid, we're scared. You know, part of the reason I think God enjoys praise and I know it's because part, a big part is because when we say, God, you're awesome, God, you're great, God, you're holy. Every time we say that, God's in agreement saying, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And he's moving closer to us every time because he dwells in our praise. I understand that. But I also think part of it is that by, through praise, we humble ourselves. 
And we crucify more of that old man saying, I don't care what my flesh wants to do. I am going to look like a fool if God asks me to, to praise and worship God. Hallelujah. So when that fear comes up, well, as, as was just spoken about at the beginning of service, God has not given us a spirit of fear. When that fear comes up, we can know that that's not God. And God desires our praise. He longs for our praise. In fact, the Bible says that God enjoys our praise. He enjoys our praise. So when that fear comes up, we need to push that aside and say, I don't care. I will be more vile than thus. Let's all stand tonight or this afternoon. All these benefits that we receive from praise and worship. By far the greatest benefit. The other ones are phenomenal. I'm so thankful for victory through praise. I'm so thankful for liberty through praise. I'm so thankful for the joy and the strength. But more than any of that, even if that wasn't a benefit of praise, just to be in his presence. When the psalmist said, God inhabits our praises, that was in the Old Testament. If in the Old Testament God inhabited the praises of his people, it's, it's got to be true today, too. If it was back then, it's got to be today. Even more so, because now we have the opportunity of having God himself live within us through the Holy Ghost. So when we praise God, he shows up. You know, in John chapter 14. And verses one through three. Jesus said something and. It's. It's uh, we've, we've said it, we say it many times. But Jesus is saying to his disciples, he's saying, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. I am anxiously awaiting that day when I am in heaven with God. And to see the streets of gold and to see the place that God has prepared for me. That is exciting to know that God prepared a place for me. But I believe the focus of this verse, is the, of this passage is the very next verse. Where he said, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, ye may be also. It, it disturbs me a, just a little bit, and it just saddens me when people ask, what are we going to do in heaven forever? I just say, We're going to be in his presence. We're going to be in his presence. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. All those benefits are great, but the purpose of praise and worship is to get into his presence. It's about relationship. If you've ever gotten to a place where you've just been lost in his presence, you know what I'm talking about when I say his presence is going to be what heaven's all about. Being with God is what it's going to be about. There was a service not too long ago in our church. And it's happened before, but it it was this one was the most recent. There was such a powerful move of God. People were in. In praise and worship, God was there. He was it was such a, a, a heavy cloud. And 
there was a group of us that were up at the front still praying, just just lingering in his presence. Service was dismissed because it had already, I'll have to call it already went a while. But a bunch of people lingered in the presence of God. Even though the service was dismissed, they stayed. They stayed to get more. They just they didn't want to leave. Nobody wanted to leave. Oh, come on, I got this. Praise and worship brings us into his presence. It's not always easy. We all have our different comfort zones. But God is calling every one of us to give the sacrifice of praise and worship. Hallelujah. Let's all gather around the front. If we would lift our hands to Jesus.